Welcome to Two Cents FC. I'm your host, Amobi Kugo, back again with my guy, L. Each week, we'll be talking with individuals from around the soccer world, learning about their stories and getting their unfiltered thoughts and opinions. This week, we're joined by a very special guest, U.S. men's national teamer, philanthropist, and LAFC midfielder, Kellen Acosta, also a fashionista, also a businessman. Um, but we're going to be getting to know all about Kellen, his career as a player, and learning about, more about his off-pitch endeavors. Kellen, how you doing today? I'm good, I'm good. I appreciate you guys having me. Nah, thanks, thanks for taking time the time. Bro. Yeah, this is this is long overdue. Uh, when me and L, you know, was brainstorming, you was always first on our mind as someone that we wanted to get on the show because not only are you successful on the field, uh, you're successful off it. And I know we're going to get into all of that and more, but first things first, got to start off with, L, you take it home. All right, two truths in a cap. So uh, if you're familiar with the show, it's an icebreaker game that we play with our guests. So Kellen will tell us three facts about himself. Two will be true. One will be a lie. And Omobi and I have to guess what the lie is. So I think the score is, what, 4-2 right yeah. now, Omobi? All right, oh, so I got some catching up to do. So whenever you're ready, Kellen, kick it off. All right. I'm going to start with uh, I own over 200-plus pairs of shoes. In county. <laughs> In county. Um, next one is uh, I'm a quarter Mexican. And then the last one is I don't know how to ride a bike. Mm. Oh, that's pretty good. Like, I don't know how to ride a bike is so random that it could be true, but I'm not going to let him throw me off, though. Nah, I feel like he hasn't really, it doesn't really touch on his Mexican heritage if he, like, a quarter. So that would mean, no. I mean, Acosta is a Spanish name. Yeah. Um, I feel like that could be their throw off, though. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. A quarter, though. That's like, so one of his parents was half. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say the bike. The bike is just too random. The bike I mean, is just too random. What was the first one again? Um, over 200 pairs of shoes. Yeah. Unless you have like a spring clean, and I don't think that's the case. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, uh, yeah, I think the cap is you're a quarter Mexican. You might have, you might have like 15%, but you're not a quarter. Is that your final answers? Yep. <laughs> oh, now that you say that, yeah, it's still my final answer. <laughs> yeah, the cap is I'm a quarter Mexican. I'm not a quarter Mexican. So <laughs> Moby was right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To be fair, I've known of Kellen or known Kellen since he was like 16, so that gives me a little leeway. Yeah, um, yeah those people yeah. off with my last name. They think they think I'm Mexican or Colombian or who knows, Puerto Rican, Dominican. I yeah. kind of got it all. <laughs> how's how's your Spanish though? You speak Spanish or understand it? Uh, it's yeah, I can understand more than I can speak. I actually been taking classes now because I really want to be dialed in, and obviously understand, communicate with my teammates and just people. I think my overall goal is to be able to to uh, uh, do interviews in Spanish. I think that oh, would be that would be really cool. It's, it's taking some time. I mean, speaking is difficult. Um, reading and writing is, is a lot easier, but speaking is, uh, takes takes a little bit. That's amazing. Duolingo, cut the check. I think uh, <laughs> I know, uh, we, we're definitely going to touch on that. You know, <laughs> someone as international as you, uh, and then obviously you're know, multi uh racial. I think uh, definitely want to tap into, you know, that philosophy and how athletes uh need to follow those footsteps. But first things first, after the two truths and a cap, when did you fall in love with soccer? I mean, it was one of my first sports, honestly. So I would say around five years old is when I really just loved it because I excelled at a young age. You know, you know, when you're when you're good at something, you enjoy it a little bit more. And um, and and also uh, growing up in Dallas, I went to the Dallas Burn games. And so it was right in my backyard. It was it was a game that I could have access to because, 
you know, going to Cowboys game and Mavericks game is a little bit more expensive than the Dallas Burn game. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I just fell in love with the sport because uh, one, it was just, it was there for me. Two, I excelled at a young age. And three, as I, I started to, to venture out and watch more and more leagues, I just saw how much passion uh, people played with, how much, you know, enjoyment um, it brought, you know, communities and, and just people together. So that was just something I just really fell in love with right away. No, most definitely. Obviously, da- Dallas has a great youth culture. You know, there's multiple club teams, multiple players that have come up the ranks. Did you, like, know about that? Did your parents know about that growing up? Or was it just, like, playing, you know, for fun and because you were good at it? Yeah, it was kind of just playing for fun. And I was just just working my way up. It was before it was just, like, you, you know, just playing with, with my friends to, to go into the club level. And, and uh, I mean, I, it wasn't until I was a little bit older where the academy program kind of started and that's when I kind of just funneled into that but it was more of just you know practicing and playing with my club team uh, more so oh, most definitely can you talk about like you talked about the academy because now we see MLS next and all the efforts being made with the academy but when we were coming up especially your age group um that's when it was kind of like this is our mission. We're going to build the academies, obviously Dallas being one of those forefronts in that, in that, in that movement. Um, how was it with your process getting scouted and then kind of being one of the first ones to really take that homegrown mantra and take it to the next level? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, mean I think the whole academy system has made tremendous strides over the years. Um, you know, for, from my standpoint, you know, like I mentioned before, I grew up playing club ball. And it was one of those things where I felt like uh, I kind of uh, reached my my level at the at the club level when I needed something something more something more challenging to take that next step. And uh, you know the FC Dallas program when I was coming through it was it was pretty it was pretty new. It wasn't for one of my ex teammates that I played with you know when I was like U seven who was actually part of the FC Dallas program was mentioned to me that, uh, you know, I should come out and, you know, check it out because it would make me take that next step. And if I want to be in a professional environment and, and be a professional athlete, this is the road I need to go to. And so basically it, it started from just me just going to go watch them play at Dallas Club and then meeting with Oscar Pereja and Chris Hayden. And I mean, they, they've they known about me for years, but I mean, I had no idea what the program had to offer, what it was about. So just seeing that uh, person firsthand was, uh, was special. I mean, it, it was, uh, I mean, it was a good team. I mean, I, I love what I saw and and um, they invited me to training. Um, and yeah, I took part of my first training session. I was, I was super nervous because I went from being one of the, uh, you know, the better guys on my club team to, being in a different environment when everyone was just really good and competitive. So I was like, this is where I need to be to kind of, kind of make me uncomfortable in a sense, because I knew that being with being uncomfortable will, will help me grow. And so I, you know, I mean, I just fell in love with the program. I loved uh, everyone's just professionalism and um, that competitive edge just to be better, to get better. So that was just something that, you know, I wanted to be a part of and, uh, yeah, I think it's just uh, it's 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 worked <laughs> it's worked well for me, um, and uh, I was able to be part of that. And I I was probably when I was like thirteen or fourteen, and then I, I spent a couple of years in the academy. And then I signed my first pro deal at sixteen. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, talk about that experience because you had the opportunity, you know, to basically go anywhere you wanted from a, co- a collegiate perspective. I know uh, University of Maryland was an option. But talk about that decision to go pro at 16. Like, you know, most people are getting their licenses and you decide to go pro. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I, mean, I didn't really go th- uh, to the co- through the college process all that much. I actually did go on an unofficial visit to Maryland and it was a, it was a school that I fell in love with. I had kind of everything I had to, that, I, that I wanted because um, I, you know, from my standpoint, um, you know, if, if the professional route didn't work out, um, I wanted to be tied to the game somehow, which would, I wanted to be like a sports broadcaster. And uh, at Maryland, they had, uh, had ties to ESPN and it had a, a, a brand new journalism school. And so I thought that would be a great avenue. But I mean, for, for, for me, if I had the opportunity to, to go pro, I was going to take it. Opportunity of a lifetime, something I've been working hard for since I was younger. And I knew, you know, if that was presented to me, I was going to take it. 
No, it's amazing. Yeah, I remember when you first went pro, um, uh, your agent at the time kept talking about, yo, there's this young kid. He reminds me of you. And then I was like, bro, this guy's 16. Uh, he's already better than me. Like, how can this 16-year-old be playing with pros? I thought I was high shit going pro at night, like 18, 19. But to make that decision at a young age, what advice would you have for young players? You know, you've been in the league 10 plus years almost. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like people need to put some respect on your name because you were one of the first to go at 16. You know, like it's no small feat, especially back then when young guys wasn't getting those type of chances. So what advice would you have for young players that are trying to follow in your footsteps? Yeah, just to stay grounded. I mean, it's a learning curve for sure. You know, you go from being to, you know, one of the best in your team to earning the first team contract. And, you know, I wouldn't say everything was handed to me, but uh, things came easier. But once I came to that professional environment, like I was a nobody. And I had to work my way up and I had to be respectful. And uh, I think from my standpoint, it's just, you know, that's just the, the, the first step in a long journey. And for, for stars, you enjoy the moment, but also you got to work hard and continue at it and grind. Because um, stuff is not going to be handed to you. I think uh, something that I really, I really, um, you know, talk about with with some of my teammates now is is this whole younger generation has this feeling of entitlement for some from some odd reason, and how you know they <laughs> feel like they shouldn't earn their stripes, right? And they they should be given to them, like whether it's like you know, uh, I mean, I had to pick up all the gear, I had to wash boots. I feel like we don't do that anymore. So I feel like it's just a, it's a respect thing. Um, and it's one of those things that, that isn't just given to you, it's earned. And so it's one of those things where I feel like you you really got to earn your way uh, through it all. And that takes its hard work. It takes it takes patience and it just takes you just a, just a strong work ethic. Now, I love that you brought that up. So real quick for the young players listening, what are some things that they can do just to set themselves apart just from a you know, not being entitled. Like one thing you brought up, you know, help the equipment guys with gear. That's a simple. If you're listening, that's one way to endear <laughs> yourselves with the older guys. Um, help with the water. One thing that's my pet peeve is like when you're playing 5v2, young guy automatically going in the middle, like to start. A thousand percent. No questions. Yeah, like <laughs> that, I'm like flabbergasted sometimes. I'm like, yo, you want me to go in or you want like yeah, that's nah. what I'm saying. It's like little stuff like that. And they're, and they're being dead, yeah. dead at serious. I'm like, like what? <laughs> if you don't be in, like for real. It's one of those things. It's one of those things where like you gotta accept criticism. And like you might not think older guys are right or coaches right, but you just gotta eat it. Like honestly, eat yeah. it. I've seen so many times where where some of these kids will say something back and I'm like, like, man, like what, like what's going on? Yeah. I feel like you, uh, the kids just need to just be just, just sponges really, just absorb everything and just say little in terms of talking back, but it's, it's okay to ask questions because you're, you're eager to yeah. learn. And, um, and, and, and also do extra. I seen, I seen kids, you know, be, you know, the last one in, first one out. And I'm like, <laughs> man, I'm like, like, what kind of what kind of generation? We're gonna, have, <laughs> we're gonna have to have a separate podcast for that because I've seen a lot. But it's crazy, man. And that's like that's yeah. like that whole entitlement thing. I'm like, they they just think they made it once they once they get that check, but it's not it's not that case. It, it's not at all. And that's another thing when when it comes to money. It is hard when you go from zero to making some money, right? And yeah. I've seen it too many times where if you're, you're walking this, into the locker room. You, if you're watching this right now, just just look at what Kellen's wearing. He's talking about money. Just 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 want to point that out. <laughs> if you're watching this right I, now. You know, blood, sweat, and tears for this one. <laughs> hey, Kellen been in the game. That, that is true. Yeah, yeah right. I earned it. I earned it. But, but just like this, even like this, I mean, I, I mean, I don't really care for designer all that much. I might have a few things, but when I see some of the younger kids just dripped out and designer head to toe and Rolexes and nice cars and popping bottles and, you know, spending thousands and thousands of dollars week in and week out, I mean, that's not the way to go <laughs> because 
<laughs> they money management. I know. I know with you, frugal athlete, right? I mean, they should really, yeah. they should really pay attention because it goes a long way. You need it to set yourself up now, so when you're my age and beyond, you know, you got that financial freedom to kind of do whatever you want. And I've seen it so many times where, you know, uh, kids literally just blowing through checks. <laughs> And, yeah. you know, and maybe they don't, that next contract is, is not as much as their first contract and they're wondering what's going on, you know, or they're going broke at 24, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's crazy. That's tough. What's one dumb thing that you splurged on early in your career? Two, I mean, ton of stuff. I mean, I was, I was in that scene where I'm like, yeah, I'm the man. I'm going to, so I'm going to go. I'm gonna go buy this and do that. I mean, I, I got Rolexes to to clothes to. I mean, I, I can talk about it because I've been through it. I've been through. It. I wouldn't necessarily say I, I went broke, but it was just one of those things where you look and you're like, "What am I doing?" Like honestly, what am I doing? Especially with the clothes. I mean, I talked about you know I got 200 plus pairs of shoes. I know it's a bad habit, but that's something that I just really love since I was a little kid. But but I also do other things as well. But it's just one of those things where, I mean, shoes, materialistic things, clothes, shoes, watches. That was that was my that was my thing. Yeah. I mean, a Rolex can be considered an investment, you know, depending on depending on the one that you get, you know. Yeah, I mean, everyone always says that, but it's not. But people are like, oh yeah, I'm gonna buy it as an investment. But are you really buying it to sell it? Like honestly. Like people yeah. always say that they're not really doing that. They just buying it because they can buy it. <laughs> they're not really thinking of it like that. <laughs> That's facts. That's true. Oh uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it's it's great to see because you're like a young veteran, so you can relate to some of the guys. Not only from a playing perspective, they see you on the world stage. They see you if they check your if they check your stats. You are homegrown, so all the stuff that they're doing it's not new to you. But also, you have a little bit of international to you too. You know, you know, Japanese heritage, you played in Dallas, now you're playing in L.A. How do you incorporate your upbringing uh, into, you know, the teams that you play for now? Yeah, I mean, I just bring, you know, my characteristics, my quality, my talent to the team and kind of help out where I see fit. And I think for me, having a pretty diverse background makes me feel like a like a chameleon where I can relate and blend into any which way environment that 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 comes about. You know, whether it's being a homegrown where I can relate to the younger guys and uh, I, you know, talk about my struggles and, you know, see what they're going through, whether it's, you know, um, um, you know, people of color being being black. I mean, I live it every day. Like, well, I feel your pain. I go through the same struggles that you do. Um, you know, whether it's just being a veteran in the league where, I mean, I have, you know, friends on every team, so I'm able to make connections and, and, uh, you know, I think my, my biggest thing is I'm, I'm able to, to connect with people on a deeper level outside of the sport. And I think that's super important for, for every team. I mean, you know, we're all, we're all soccer players, but it's like, what about your family? Or what your in interests are? You know, if you have any sort of problems, you can come to me and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be a shoulder to cry on. Or I'll, I'll listen and, um, you know, I'll, I'll give advice uh, if I can. So I think for me, it's just being a chameleon and bringing certain attributes that I have into, you know, whatever environment I'm I'm in and just kind of just thrive, really, and try to just help out uh, and contribute, you know, in any which possible way. No, that's what it's all about. And uh, it, you've been able to watch your your progression as a leader and, you know, some of the things that you're doing currently with LAFC uh, is amazing. And uh, just knowing you personally, uh, the plug at Dallas, you know, back in the day, you know, young, young Kellen, 22, 23, being able to uh, make a couple of calls for some of us. That was uh, great to see. When it comes to, uh, I want to shift gears real quick. Obviously, you know, the, tr the trajectory, you've been highlighted since you were 16, youth national team, men's national team. The trajectory was, okay, we're going to funnel homegrown MLS All-Star Europe national team pipeline. We all know um, that didn't happen. So as much as you can share, talk about your decisions to pursue Europe, not having it work out, deciding on the Colorado situation, and then eventually, you know, coming to L.A. Yeah, I mean, it's my career has been a roller coaster. It's been a whirlwind. You know, I went from 
you know, achieving a lot of great things at a young age. I mean, I did all-star game, national team. Uh, FC Dallas played, you know, week in, week out. But uh, I've always been vocal about me wanting to play in Europe. That's been my dream. Uh, ever since I was young, since I was five years old, since I fell in love with the game, that's always been something I wanted to explore and, and uh, you know, wanted to achieve. And I've always made that known, but um, it, it just hasn't happened because I just think the, how the, the league is, is based on my accomplishments, they view me uh, in a certain regard, meaning they, they want a lot of money from me. And realistically, that's not the case because um, Americans weren't, there weren't a whole lot of Americans making their way through Europe. You only had the outliers, which were like the Jermaines, the Clints, the Michaels, the Josies, the Landons. Like there's only, you know, a few of them, a few of us really. So uh, a lot of teams didn't have, you know, so much faith in, in Americans. And, um, so when when you have this ridiculous number, even if there are interests, it's you know almost impossible, right? Um, yeah. So, um, but I mean, there were bids for me, and I and I really thought that I was gonna go at some point, even on my early days at Dallas. But they declined offers, and that's just that's just the way it is. I mean, I signed that contract, and technically I got to fulfill it. So I mean, they they hold the rights to me. And it got to the point where, you know, they weren't willing to move on from me. So I told them, you know, after, this is after, this is in 2018 when I was also coming back from injury. I had hernia surgery. And I was like, I need something different. I need something. I need a different environment. I need, I need you know, something to kind of, you know, change my, you know, perception on everything. Maybe give me an added dimension that I, I had to make that jump. And so I honestly didn't know I was going to Colorado. I just kind of got traded there. <laughs> and so right. and that's how I kind of, that's how the MLS works. Like you don't necessarily get to choose where you go. It kind of just happens. And that, that whole fiasco was a mess of its own. I mean, I didn't, I didn't find out until one of my friends told me because it leaked on Instagram and Twitter and all that. So I didn't even know about it until it was out there. So I've become a Colorado player. Yeah, in Colorado, I mean, my first couple of years we struggled. But I was still getting a European interest. I had a couple of offers on the table. But the problem was with my trade to, to Colorado, they had to split the money with Dallas. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> so that makes it challenging too, because now you gotta split the money and they traded for me and you know, all uh, the whole number number thing, it didn't make sense for Colorado. And I understood that and I was like, fair enough. <laughs> And so that's kind of how I ended up Colorado and, you know, I spent some years there, got had some success with him and, you know, and I actually got traded here this past year. And it was one of those things where I didn't know I was coming here either. <laughs> and I just kind of, I got a phone call. I was, I was at national team camp and it was this whole fiasco because Colorado basically told me that they couldn't afford me and that they needed to find, find an alternative. And so it was either I signed a new deal and stayed there long term or they were going to trade me somewhere. And I basically try to do an all out call to the league saying if I got traded to, to any of y'all, I'm not signing a new deal because in hopes that if I'm, if I'm free, I can still achieve my dreams and go to Europe. And so, <laughs> yeah, so basically, I mean, teams still want to trade for me and Colorado just traded me to the highest bidder and. And that's kind of how I ended up here in LA. <laughs> no, that's great. So, I mean, when the when when the trade went down, I personally, I obviously knowing you and knowing like your dreams of going to Europe, but with the way you're on the field, but most importantly off the field, I thought LA was like if you were going to get traded somewhere, I think that was the best situation leading up to the yeah. World Cup year. Knock on wood, and obviously they saw value in you and you've been an excellent player for them this year, supporter shield and everything. Um, but what is it like now? You know, you've had a good year. You've been in MLS, you're MLS through and through. Is Europe still something on your mind or is it kind of like, I'm just going to play soccer have fun and see what happens. Cause I have, no, I have thoughts that I, I don't want to bring up about why people maybe <laughs> wasn't telling you teams wanted you or, you know, putting the price high. I'm not going to say it here, but, I have reservations a lot, but that's all I'm going to say. 
I mean, I just think for me, it's it's it makes more sense for 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 me to get traded in league because that num- that money goes straight to the team rather than mm-hmm. straight to the owner. So it's a little bit different. But I mean, from my standpoint, I, I, Europe has still been a dream of mine, and that's something that like, as a kid, I was like, you you have goals, and and if you can, you know, have a realistic opportunity to achieve them, you want to achieve them. And for me, it's not about going to Europe for the money. It's about like a childhood dream that I wanted to achieve. I mean, one of them is to play in Europe. One of them is to play in a World Cup. And I mean, obviously the World Cup is 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 soon. And I'm hoping to, that I can be, you know, in Qatar and on the field for that. Um, so that that's coming a little bit sooner. And then and hopefully with the with the, the World Cup, you know, playing at the biggest tournament in the world at the world stage, you know, I perform well and, you know, let the chips fall where they may. I mean, it's 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 one of those things where it kind of it's all up to me just to perform and, um, and you know, hopefully, um, you know, have some lookers and, you know, come December, you know, I'm, I might be in a different Jersey, but no, if not, I mean, at least I put my best foot forward and gave everything to, to achieve that. And I know I can accept it knowing that, you know, I gave everything to, 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 to go there. No, most definitely. Maybe that might be your Christmas gift. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> God if, if and when, if and when Europe happens, what's your dream team? Like, this is a dream scenario, a dream, 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 dream club for me to play for. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I grew up being a Chelsea fan. So, I mean, I know Chelsea has been struggling a little bit, but uh, I, I've always, I always liked the Blues, man. So, I mean, realistically, I mean, I would love to play in England. Just, just, just overall, just a transition thing, you know, obviously the language. Um, you know, similar characteristics as the U.S. I think it'll be an easier transition. I want to learn a new language. And, um, I mean, hopefully it could be also in London because I love London. <laughs> sure. No, so real quick, on the field, I, I got a question. Um, obviously, you're right-footed, left-footed. Did you start off one or the other? What is like your technical trick that you did growing up? That's just me being random because you're really, you know, <laughs> I think I was just kind of just born that way. I just grew up just, I mean, I was just constantly outside just practicing on both. And from a youth level, I mean, it was one of those things, depending on where I was on the field, if I was taking a free kick or corner kick, I would take from like end swingers with my right foot and end swingers with my left foot. And sometimes I'll take free kicks with my left foot and vice versa. And so I think I was just kind of just born that way and I just kind of stuck stuck with it. I mean, I'm, technically I'm, I'm left-handed, so maybe I'm supposed to be left-footed instead of right-footed, mm-hmm. but <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I was just born that way and I just kind of just, just continued just doing it. Everything just kind of just happened naturally, I would say. Oh, most definitely. And then, you know, taking it to LA, obviously, um, you guys are doing well on, on the field, off the field, killing it. Every time I see a new brand deal, it's it's, it's something with you. Um, talk about how the city's embraced you, and you know if, if you've had time to continue to dive into you know the Japanese community and you know African American community and the communities that you're a part of. Yeah, I mean LA for for starters is the the land of opportunity. I mean you can really jump into whatever you want and LA has kind of everything that I'm I'm interested in. I mean, with the footballing side with LAFC, I mean, I, I would say I play for, you know, the best club in the MLS in terms of just organization. I mean, they really take care of us. And I think the on-field product shows um, with that. And then for just LA as a, as a city and as a community, they really embraced me. And um, I mean, I haven't, I didn't really dive too deep into my Asian heritage until I moved to LA. And, and, and that whole community just welcomed me with open arms. And it was just quite just amazing to see, you know, them just embrace me and invite me to things and really welcome me. And, and I just felt like I had um, a community that felt like home and I felt like myself. Um, Cause I talked about it in like some, some articles and players tribune that, you know, I struggle with identity um, in a sense, because uh, I'm a mixed bag, right? You know, yeah. by appearance, I, I'm black, but um, you know, I have a Hispanic last name, 
Um, I'm also white. I'm also <laughs> Asian. And so, I mean, people look at me and they, they, they're they like, are you confused? Because you're all these things, but you look like this, right? And then I dealt with, you know, um, people making fun of me because my grandma, cause she would come pick me up because she's Asian. Um, and I'll be embarrassed sometimes because, you know, I wanted to, to fit in, right, rather than stand out. And, you know, I, I grew up in a predominantly white uh, community and neighborhood. So it's one of those things I'm walking on eggshells wherever I go. And, you know, I, I dealt with, you know, little things of racism. Maybe as a young kid, you kind of uh, look past it because you feel like it's just normal. People saying things, you're just like, you just try to laugh it off, right? Whether it's some turns off the lights or saying, like, where'd you go? Whether it's like I'm walking to a store, they're asking if I'm lost or they follow me around the store. Um, you know, like little things like that. Or I'm walking down the street, people crossing the street when they see me. And I'm, I'm super unassuming. Like I'm, I'm not like, you know, I don't look a certain way where you should be intimidated or afraid. But, you know, I've kind of dealt with all of it. Um, but yeah, I mean... <laughs> I mean, like I said, I mean, LA is just, I went off, off on a tangent, my bad, but yeah, LA has been, it's been great. And then from a fashion standpoint, I mean, it got, it got everything, literally everything. And I'm, I'm so, like I mentioned shoes, I mentioned clothes and I mean, everything's based out of LA. I met some very cool people. I've done some events. So I actually got to shake hands with people and just overall, it just helped me expand my brand, kind of take it to the next level. I've kind of been in, um, I don't know if bland is the word for it, but like Denver and Dallas, I mean, they're, they're definitely great cities, but what piques my interest is it's, it's the whole fashion standpoint. Um, it's the Asian community, um, black community. And I feel like they're not as diverse as a, as a Los Angeles, which is like a melting pot, it's similar to New York, I would say. Um, so just really diving deeper and just obviously helping out the community around me. It's just, it's been it's just amazing because you can really get, get into whatever you want here. And I think it's just, it's truly just beautiful. It's, it's just from the people to the organizations, to the team, to everything about it. It's been, it's been great. Oh, most definitely. Um, definitely. That's a, let's circle back to your international career a little bit. We touched on it a little bit earlier, but, um, you know, you came up through the national team system, through the ranks, the you know, U15, 17s, have over 50 caps on the senior team. Um, what has been one of your favorite memories to this point, just coming up through the system? Favorite memories? Um, I guess I do it by a timeline. So, I mean, for me, was stepping on my field for, for the U17 World Cup and just really getting a taste of the international atmosphere. And just be like, wow, this is, you know, this is this is different. This is me being a local kid to to the world stage at that age, and kind of just taking that all in was was amazing. And then I think another thing that really, you know, uh, that just popped into my head is what what I was doing when I got my first call up from the national team. It was actually I actually closed on my first house. I literally got done signing the papers. And I had a missed call from some random number in California. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know who this is, whatever. I just ignored it. And then actually Oscar Pereira called me and he actually broke the news to me. And the guy that actually I missed a call from was Jurgen Klinsman, letting me know <laughs> that he's calling me up to the national team and that he's excited to have me and that I've earned the right to be there. And he's looking forward to, to uh, having me in camp. So that was, that was a special day. It was a, it was a milestone. First senior call up in my first house um, and what else? And then I think I would have to say my, my first goal with the national team was a, was a free kick versus Ghana. It was a pre gold cup um, uh, friendly. And yeah, I mean, you always remember your first, right? And so it was just a special moment for me just to, just to score it. It was an important goal. Uh, we actually won the game. So it was, it was exciting, exciting. And yeah, I mean, I've, yeah, there's just been so many things. I mean, I've won three trophies in the national team. So every final has been 
been memorable um as well the celebrations too <laughs> so but uh well, yeah i mean quite a quite a few things i would say <laughs> here's yeah, to no more doubt, upcoming man. memories yeah i hope so i hope so so you know there's a lot of good times there's also some bad times as well you're on the squad that missed the 2018 world cup but you've also been a mainstay during this you know current qualifying window um, so what are some differences between the squads like in 18 and 22 um, that have allowed the guys to kind of get over that hump? Uh, I think part of it is a new cycle, kind of a new everything, kind of just uh, like uh, starting from zero, a refresher, um, and just a new, new, new team, new team of guys are just hungry and ready to prove and and a bunch of quality players that are making their way through, you know, big clubs. So if you look up our overall makeup of our team, I mean, we have a very diverse team, guys that, you know, are playing Champions League ball and playing for, for big clubs week in and week out. So I think for, for that standpoint, I think the quality has been, been, been great. And I think we got a bunch of fighters in a way, guys that, you know, that can just roll up their sleeves and grind. Is, yeah, dogs is a word for it. And, you know, whether we're, we're playing, you know, against Mexico in, in the Nations League final or going to to Honduras in a hostile night or kind of wherever, I mean, you, you've seen seen the group grow tremendously and being able to, to adapt what to what comes their way and, and to conquer eventually. I mean, we've, we've been through a lot of highs, a lot of lows, but... You know, I think that's what makes this team great is the 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 way that we bounce back and just uh, overcome adversity. And so I think that's truly remarkable. And it just shows the strength of the team. And just the overall player pool is just deep, deep. I mean, I think Greg and, and Co. Have a, have a hard time, you know, picking a team because we have so many players that are deservingly should should be in the squad but it's it's one of those things where it's tough it's really tough and i think that's a great problem to have and that just shows the strength of 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 our team in the u.s and in the direction that we're going so i think that's that's very positive for now and and for for years to come yeah no, facts this is definitely we can we can say one of our golden generations for sure like the amount of talent on this team is incredible and the level that they play on the club level is is paramount. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of allows you to kinda like not really have those jitters when you're playing against certain big name players because you play against them, you know, week in and week out. Um, right. So as we know, the World Cup is around the corner. Um, it's actually in a month, really. Uh, yeah, so it's like a countdown now, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you know, it'll be criminal if you don't make the squad with the, especially with the way your qualifying went. Um, but what are some of your your World Cup hopes? Um, I know like it's always been a dream to play on the senior level in a World Cup and you know, this close to getting there. Um, what are some some hopes and dreams, some manifestations, if you will, um, for this upcoming tournament? Yeah. I always talk about it. I don't wanna be I mean, obviously I wanna make the team, but I don't I don't wanna just be a passenger. I wanna be on the field. I wanna contribute, right? And so my biggest thing is to be on the field and play at a capacity where I can, you know, impact the game in a positive way. And so that's something I have sights on. And and then from a team perspective, you know, you, you got to get out of group. I mean, that's the hardest bit, right? And then you take each game for what it is, a final. And he's going to grind. It's not going to be easy. I mean, it's uh, we've got a tough group as is. And um, no, nah, I mean, I'm, I'm just ready to kind of just soak it all in and just kind of just kind of just how I was feeling at the U-17 World Cup. But this is you know, <laughs> times a million, right? But um, yeah, no, I'm just looking forward to just everything it has to offer and just to just step onto the field, hear the national anthem, having, you know, millions and millions of people watching the, the beautiful game. And, you know, hopefully, um, I mean, I, I talk about being, being, a, uh, being a contributor on the field, but I, I mean, how special it would be to score a goal. So... I'm hoping that, um, you know, I can get on the score sheet. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And so without – we can't talk about World Cup without talking about the kids that dropped. Um, <laughs> there's been a lot of opinions about I knew that was them. coming next. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of opinions about them on and off the record, you know, so we want to get your thoughts on them. 
Um, and then also as a stylish guy, we want to see how you would like, how would you style these kits off the pitch if you had to wear them? Yeah. So from my standpoint, I kind of touched on it, um, you know, previously in some other interviews and stuff that I've done. I think the jerseys look a little bit better on than, than what they did in, in pictures. It kind of didn't do it justice, but at the same time, I wanted something, something more, something that screams USA, United States, something with a little bit more creativity. Cause I felt like they were a little just vanilla and bland. And especially when I saw, you know, the mock-ups of, of, of the different US kids, I'm like, man, my man, if, if they could have just, you know, leaked these jerseys without actually making a mass production of them, maybe they would have, you know, went a different direction. And maybe if they were to hire, maybe like some, I mean, we have some of the most creative designers in the world here in the U.S. If we got, a, you know, some of them to collaborate on a jersey, I mean, we could probably have the sickest jerseys out there. And they could even end up making more money than what they're doing. So for me, I mean, I, I, I expected more, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah. And as far as styling... Yeah, I mean it, it's. I just think they're so they're so bland. But like some of the other jerseys I've seen, some people, you know, wear kind of like in like a boxier fashion, the kind of oversized. I mean, you can do it any which way. I've seen it with like you know a hoodie underneath with a jersey on top. That'd be kind of hard. Um, I just feel like just just layering it with like a little jacket over the top and a little subtle. If it was like a brighter jersey. Um, I think that'd be a nice touch, but I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't normally just rock soccer jerseys like that, to be honest with you, but I've seen some, some cats that they really, they really put it on, I can't lie, but, uh, I don't know. I think I'll just wear like that kind of just more subtle. Yeah, for sure. You could probably get the long sleeve off. Like you mentioned oversized, like kind of give it like a, um, a hockey jersey vibe. So like the yeah yeah I mean they don't make long sleeve jerseys anymore like they used to right? I mean they really need to bring them back yeah yeah they actually got long, long sleeves for the crazy home, for the home kits oh do they oh, yeah that's news to me <laughs> 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 oh man yeah then the, then the long, the long sleeve would be dope long sleeve would be dope yeah it actually looks better in long sleeve I I will give it that I feel like any jersey looks better in long sleeve I know a Moby growing up he he used to wear the long sleeve. <laughs> for the union days, I remember those. <laughs> yeah, back in the day. I'm like, dude, it's 90 out. degrees outside. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I gotta, I'm not as fashionable as you, um, but I had to do a little something to set myself up. A little something. I respect yeah, that. But speaking of fashion, we talk to a lot of people on this chat, on this show. Everyone has Kellen Acosta as their top five fashion. Wow, round I table. love that. Respect. Five aside. So we want to ask Kellen himself, who's on your top five fashion five aside from a soccer perspective? Anywhere in the world? Oh no, we're gonna keep it, we're gonna keep it within the states. In the you might, states. You might hurt, you might hurt some people's feelings, but it's all good. Yeah, man, I gotta think about it, man. In the states, national team included or no? Nash, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll count that, yeah. right, L? We'll we'll count that. that. Yeah, we'll give him that. I'll probably go with with Yedlin. He's a little bit different. I kind of vibe with this style. Tim Weah. Um, I'm trying to think. I like I like Sebastian on my team. Ibiaga. 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 He be, he, yeah. Might not get as much press as some people, but he, he comes with it. He comes with it. Uh, so that's three, not including myself, right? Yeah, yeah not including include yourself. You, you, you're not the include captain of the squad. I'm right. oh, a captain. Right. Uh, captain. Hey, right. I'm I'm trying to think, man. I don't even know. <laughs> Where's some? I need some. I need some hints, man. Any any? Need some names. Who's it? Yeah, who's some? Who's some other guys people have mentioned? Do you guys know? Off top, yeah, but we we don't want to we don't want to give you any hints. We we trying to see who the who the captain thinks. Oh man, we trying to get we trying to get you in hot water right now. 
Uh, no, it's not, it's not really. I'm just like I'm trying to go through the teams right now. Yeah. How do you how do you like you know um, soccer embracing fashion? You know, like obviously you got like league fits. You know, you got the walkouts now. Are you uh, are you a fan of that? What can they do more to like continue to embrace mm -hmm. that fashion culture? Yeah, huge fan of it. I mean, the problem is we're only like five years late. But <laughs> it, it's, it's nice to it's nice to start somewhere, but uh, but I think for for us to really really take things to the next level is you really gonna I mean that's that's the whole industry to make you know soccer in the U S blow up. It's yeah. you know it's entertainment, entertainment and fashion is really yeah. is really how how the sport will really explode. And so it's uh, no, it's been great to kind of just see the the different walkouts, the scene. Seeing guys really, you know, show their personality via their fits, right? And I think, you know, fashion is a form of art. So it's always cool to see, you know, what people kind of can piece together. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm really blanking on who else, for real. Um, yeah, uh, Larry's from Portland. He's been getting a couple votes. Who's this? Mabiala. Mabiala from Portland. He get he gets a couple votes. Uh, right I haven't really seen him, Larry. Right, Larry's um, Yeah. Um, I haven't really seen him. That's why. Uh, yeah. Uh, got, uh, Etienne, Etienne, where he's top five. Who, Derek? <laughs> you know, yeah. say like that. Yeah. Derek. Derek. <laughs> <laughs> we talk. We talk about the same Etienne, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what he, he said. <laughs> Oh, we can man. pull up the clip. We can pull up the clip. That's what he said. Damn, Derek. All right. I know some, <laughs> I of, your, some, of, your like... Colorado, some of your old Colorado teammates would probably put them put their names in the hat. Ooh. Who? Uh, uh, John Lewis, maybe. Oh man, I knew I knew you were gonna say John. I, I, I knew you were gonna say I, John. he's not in my top five, but I know he might think he's in the top he, five. He's somewhere. not. No, he he for sure <laughs> thinking in top five. He for sure. Um, dang, I really don't. I mean, that last person really throwing me off. Uh oh. Um. GQ, if you're listening, I don't know. I, I, I collab with Kellum. I'm saying, no. I just, I just, I mean, for me, I pay more attention to other sports. I think, I think mm -hmm. you know, football and basketball, what they're doing, even with the women, with the women's teams, they really put in stuff together. And it's it's really cool to kind of just see, you know, GQ and some other um, um, editorials really taking notice to 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 soccer for one and just athletes as a whole. I think for for soccer players, I think we should be the most stylish guys and girls because of our body type. I think we have the perfect body types to to really pull fits off. I mean, you see in these you know three hundred pound linemen wearing some skinny jeans and some and some puffer jackets, right? I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I think we got the perfect bodies for it. So I mean, I think I think guys should really take more pride into being presentable and really, really showing off, you know, their style. A lot of people just don't care, and I'm like, that's yeah. a shame. <laughs> that's a real so, shame. Where Where did you get your ins inspiration for your your fashion? Because I feel like your fashion has continually evolved, you know, as you've gotten older. Yeah, it's just kind of just 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 looking at what other people are wearing, um, whether it's other celebrities or just from people just walking on the street. I mean, I'm a people watcher, and so when you know mm -hmm. the game has brought me to to so many different places, and so I can take pieces from you know all the different environments I've been in, whether it's in, in New York and I've seen like the layered fashion in the fall and the winter wear, or going to Europe and and to, to London, to, to France, to Italy's, or maybe even to like a Florida, which is totally different, LA, Colorado. I mean, the different areas that I've been in, I've kind of just seen, um, you know, different representations of fashion. And yeah, and then obviously with the athletes, uh, it's obviously a little bit different because they, they start buying just whatever's on the rack and it's super expensive, but it's, yeah. Maybe you can wear it in a similar fashion, but maybe, you know, more on the frugal side. You can still be you don't have to spend a lot of money to be put together. And so that's what people people fail fail to know. They think, oh, I'm gonna just buy the mannequin and I'm I'm gonna be with it. But 
It doesn't work like that. Mary. It don't work like that. Fine, a Mary. I mean, you talking about you talking about like Gucci oh, tracks, and I'm like, well, like I don't even. I, for me personally, I don't like Chrome Hearts at all. Like it's, yeah, I mean, God. I don't know if that's wrong to say, but it's it's uh, it's very ugly. <laughs> it's very it's giving me Tom. Uh, yeah, I, Tom Hardy vibes. Like that whole here. Yeah. Like or like affliction. You remember that affliction? Yeah. Like the whole like yeah. grungy <laughs> skull punisher type. I'm like, man, why do you want that on? And it's like, yeah. you know, you spend in five k, ten k for some jeans that are Levi's. Like, come on. So say Not you working. know, two cents works with your management team for Kellen Capsule Collection. Which brand are you rocking with? Which brand are you looking to do a capsule collection? For like fashion, yeah. From a fashion perspective, yeah. I I even um, shoot you some mail. It, it can be it can be accessories as well. You don't have to be clothes. It could be an accessory brand or fragrance or something like that. For me, it would we probably know you, we know you into I mean, wine. We know you into is, candles as well. Yeah, I mean, I was saying more of the fashion side. And for me, even it might be kind of played out and whatever, but Louis Vuitton, timeless brand that's forever evolving. And they have the fragrances, they have the jewelry, they, they're up on the street where they, especially with Virgil, um, you know, rest in peace to him, but they've really taken, taken over the fashion game. And with their collaborations with Nike, to even their their um, collaboration with AC Milan, which was I mean, whew, dope, dope. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just a timeless brand. That I feel like that will be around for a hundred years plus, and it will always be sustainable. Um, I mean, I, I love me some wine, but not everyone's a wine drinker, so I had to go for something that you know everyone, uh, or most people would be into. So what's this speaking capsule collection Milan. look like? Oh, go ahead, L. And I was going to say, like, speaking of AC Milan, how are you liking that uh, off-white deal that they have? No, I mean, it went crazy. Like, I was like, I'm like, I'm, I told the people here at LAFC, I'm like, we got to make something happen. Like, <laughs> you, you could really take, like I said, like, you could really take over and grow the sport so much just based on that. You're talking about casual people that don't want soccer at all, but they know about that capsule collection. Yeah. You know, how many different eyes and more, you know, viewers or whatever that can, you know, be interested in the team just based on a couple, you know, the team being outfitted in, in a brand. I think, I mean, that's huge. I think it was super dope. I thought it was super cool. And just with, with not even just Louis Vuitton, but I've seen, you know, D squared do stuff in Man City. I've seen like Tom Ford. I saw Tom Brown with Barcelona. I mean, I think that is a is is a great way to to attract a, a different audience for sure. So let's talk about this capsule collection real quick. Like, <laughs> what are some pieces that you'd have? Like, I know you rock in the toiletry bags. Is it like toiletry bags and like a hoodie? Is it like the whole fit? What? What are like three pieces if you can pick from your capsule collection with Louis Vuitton? It's probably got to be uh, I'll say shoes, pants, jacket. I would say I have to layer it. The undershirt could be fine, but the jacket's got to scream something. I mean, if I would pick four, it'd have to be some kind of accessory, which would be like a toiletry bag or, or something like that. To give that extra pop, but I mean, for me, I'm I'm a shoe guy, so that shoes has to be, you know, first and foremost, shoes make the outfit. Jeans, I was thinking more of like a monochrome type deal, and then jacket to just tie it all together and make it just pop. Okay, hey, if you're listening, um, let's get more into business. Let, let's let's get more into the business side real quick before uh, we we let you go. You know, you're doing a lot of stuff on the philanthropy side. Talk about, you know, your efforts there and, you know, um, some of the organizations that you support. Yeah, for me, I mean, this this, this philanthropy work, I've really, you know, idolized LeBron James and what he does in the community. And obviously, I might not be as big of an athlete as him, but I'm, you know, I'm hoping to make a similar impact as him 
um, in the communities. And for me, I mean, that's just, that's something that's always touched my heart. And at growing up, you know, I, I've had, you know, all these celebrity idols, but none of them were present. And so for me, it's about being present, being available and, and showcasing um, to people that, you know, they can make it too. And not only that, you know, sport is a way to, to make it, but you can make it any which way. And they can maybe take something from me that, that you know, that can help them grow, whether it's identity, whether it's about struggle or obstacles. Like I was out of national for two years and I had to overcome that and fight back and get back into the team, whether it's, whether it's injuries. I mean, there's hardships all around. And for me, um, like I really take pride in with people with disabilities. And I want to help them as much as possible. And just the youth, the, you know, the youth is our future. And so you want to groom them, educate them in the right way to, to have a better community. And so when I talk about, you know, the young kids, um, you know, not really taking pride in being professional and leaving early, like it, it kind of hurts me in a bit because, you know, I want what's best for them and I know what it takes to, to, to take it to the next level. And so I really take pride in that. And, and I mean, from the organizations I work with, I work with Global Down Syndrome. I work with uh, 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 the, the Soul Call team here. Um, I do Special Olympics. I've hosted various youth camps. I go to schools. I mean, people hit me up on Instagram. They say, like, come to our practice, talk to the, talk to the boys or girls, and I'm there. Um, I'm, a, I'm an ambassador for the U.S. amputee uh, team. They actually were just in the World Cup in Turkey. They actually mm -hmm. lost in the round of 16 um, to uh, Haiti, but uh, they've had a tremendous journey. It's been truly remarkable getting to know those guys and being close to them. Um, what else? I mean, I'm kind of involved with a bunch of random things, and I'm hoping to to continue to grow and to expand. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that I just want to continue doing and try to just make a make an impact, whichever way I can. No, that's what it's all about. And then, um, you know, on the business side, you know, you've done a lot of wonderful things. And shout out to your manager and your team. Um, it's been amazing to see the brand deals, the endorsement deals, all the different things that you've been able to do. Uh, talk about some of the entrepreneurial en endeavors that you got or are pursuing at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the biggest thing is is real estate. Um, I think that was the easiest form once I got my, my taste and um, I don't even know when it was, six ish years ago, seven years ago. It's been something that I just want to continually expand and, and, and to grow. And I, I think it's, 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 a, it's an easier avenue to, to um, build equity in and to make money. And then for me, it's obviously being strategic with what brands I work with and seeing if there's there's opportunities to have equity in the company. Because, I mean, it's great doing campaign deals, but you want longevity and you want your money to make money and you want you want those checks every month, right? Um, and so yeah. I think that's super important to not only just, you know, accept whatever deal, but see if you can be creative and to, um, you know, may, hopefully owning businesses as well. And... I mean, my next, my next thing that I'm hoping that can come into fruition is um, I want to be an owner of a team of some sort. And so that's, that's next on the agenda, whether it's um, specific sport, whatever sport, you know, obviously football would be great. Soccer would be just amazing, but I, I think it's actually funny because a lot of the owners for, for, for sports, they're actually, they actually never played that sport. Yeah. Like you look at like an A-Rod. I mean, no. he could have, he could have owned a, a baseball team, right? But look at him. He's, he's owning, he owns uh, the Timberwolves. Look at like a LeBron. I mean, he's talking about now he wants to own a team in Vegas, but now he, he has, um, uh, pickleball squad. Liverpool pickleball, He's with uh, he's with Red Boss of Red Sox, um, so I mean whatever wherever is kind of an opportunity to be something I want to you know Milan dive too. into. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, he just did that as well. So I mean yeah, I mean I think that would be super interesting to do. 
and I'm hoping to to shake the right hands and meet the right people that I can, you know, get my foot in the door and and hopefully, you know, be a part of an organization that I could, I could, uh, you know, be a member. And I mean, we we want, I mean, us as, as you know, as black people, we want representation at the highest level. And I think this is an important way to, to do that and just kind of funnel down and have more minorities in charge. And if I can get the opportunity to do so, I mean, that would be amazing. No, I love that. 100%. Definitely, definitely speaking see of, that in your future. Speaking of LeBron, um, like this is something that Moby and I have talked about in the past. Like, who is that? Who's going to be that LeBron for American soccer? You know what I mean? Um, some may say it's Christian. Some may say, you know, Western to a degree. But what do you think um, needs to happen for us to get a LeBron of American soccer that plays here? Uh, in the place here in the U.S.? Yeah, it's. I think what makes LeBron LeBron and some of those guys is personality, and being super outgoing and being pre- like it's one of those things where, uh, as soccer players, we are kind of uh, reserved and shy, and you. And I think we're kind of behind on the times. Like you look at like a, an Odell, super recognizable out there. You know everything, everything, and I think for for our standpoint, we don't necessarily have those players, um, like like basketball does, and so I think it's important to, I mean, not to be fake. I mean, it has to be authentic and on brand, but we need more personalities, and um, you know, more people willing to to invest more of their time to helping out the communities and help building the sport, um. I'm not saying that those guys aren't doing it or any of the guys aren't doing it, but I just feel like what makes basketball so big is kids are growing up wanting to be like the LeBrons and the Steph Currys and the Michael Jordans because that's all they see. So it's one of those things where we need to be around and we need to, I don't don't know what, what we can do to be a forefront, but maybe it's, it's have a representation at, at the ownership level and kind of pushing other athletes that way, or whether it's being more present in the communities, whether it's establishing businesses, building fields. Cause you, I mean, you go down the street, how many, how many soccer fields do you see compared to a basketball court? Right. Very few. Yep. And I think it's also challenging too, because soccer in a sense is, is a hard sport to kind of train on your own rather than it's easy to just go and shoot hoops, right? It's, for soccer, you make up excuses. Like, I'm not going to shoot on the goal, there's no net. Or I'm not shooting because there's no goalie. Or, you know, we, we find a way to make make excuses, but I think it's important. And I think like you see it in other countries, other levels, is they don't make excuses, they find ways. But, I mean, I think with, with the infrastructure that we have in the U.S., I think we could really, you know, take the sports to the next level, which is building personalities and just, um, you know, uplifting stories like myself, the Westons, Yunus Musas, to Tim Weah, DeAndre Yedlins, because, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, for me, from my standpoint, like I play on a team full of stars, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm walking around kind of almost unnoticed in a way, even though I play for your national team here. And it's one of those things where I, I never really took that in consideration until Giorgio Chiellini told me that. Mm. Where it's like, how come, I mean, some people do come up to me, but not as much, but it's one of those things where, you know, I play for the U.S. national team, you know, potentially going to play in a World Cup, but a lot of these people don't care, right? I'm not saying I want to be bothered by any means, but at the same time, someone's got to give where it needs to be like that. And I think that will help grow the sport and you're going to have many more me's and you're going to potentially have, you know, some LeBron James in soccer here. So, I mean, I, to answer your question, I mean, a whole lot of everything, really. <laughs> but it, it, obviously it takes that one, but at the same time, um, this is being present and available. I think it's the biggest thing. Yeah, and I agree. And like definitely 
marketing push as well from whether it be the athletic brands, you know, you know, bolstering the sport. Um, and also, like you said, like that personality, like we don't have like a Neymar with like the crazy hair, like DeAndre was pulling it off. Yeah, we, we never, sh- yeah, we never showcase it, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think that's huge. That's like we, story. they never show, they, they show, yeah, they, or when they do show stories that they're so boring that people are like, all right, let me just click through this or I'm on to the next <laughs> video. And, yeah. and now we're at that social media age where it's all about videos for anything and everything. You go on a vacation, you post a video. So <laughs> like, uh, yeah, but it, I don't know. It just needs to be, there needs, I don't, I don't know what it is, but hopefully soon people can, you know, have the blueprint to really, uh, you know, boost the stories and the, the images and likenesses of other players. Yeah, for sure. All right, so let's jump into some some rapid fire questions before we let you go here. Um, so, what is one interesting fact about yourself that most people wouldn't know? I thought you said rapid fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, interesting facts. Hmm. All right, we might have to, we, let me think on that. Let, let's go to the next, got another question. All right. I'll, I'll take yeah, a circle back one. on that one. <laughs> on your pre-match playlist. For me, like, I'm actually super weird, man. Like, I put my phone on shuffle and, like, whatever I'm feeling in the moment is what I listen to. It'll be from, like, some Gunna to, like, some, like, Morgan Wallet type deal. Like, I don't really care. It's just, like, whatever whatever's in the moment. That's a big range. Facts. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> All right, so you've played with the national team, you know, played overseas. What's your favorite country to play in? Um, probably it was probably Spain. Spain was my favorite place. There's some the weather, the culture, kind of everything. Um, I loved it. And then London, five second. I love London. And I played, I had, had the opportunity to play at Wembley, so that was pretty, pretty amazing too. Dope, dope. All right. And so staying domestically, you know, what's your favorite away city? Toronto. <laughs> Toronto's a very popular. Isn't, popular Toronto's area. dope. I love Toronto, man. <laughs> yeah. Man. Real ones, no. <laughs> <laughs> you got any Moby? Uh, yep. Yeah, no, that's. I was just saying Toronto. People, people know. Nice. Uh, sure. So you want to circle back to that first one? Yeah. Interesting fact about me. Goodness. I'm trying to think. I mean, one of them. I mean, the interesting fact is I don't know how to ride a bike, and people. And I almost got I got exposed with this last national team camp because where we were staying at in um, in Spain, we actually had a bike ride to the the field, and they had to have a car for me because I couldn't bike. <laughs> <laughs> like and Greg like outed me in front of everybody. Yeah. Um, uh, I, mean, I, got a I mean, that's pretty boring. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, red or white wine? Red. Okay. Ooh, favorite red. From what country? Or like favorite or in uh, type of red? Yeah. Uh, probably a Bordeaux from France. Okay. Probably one of my favorites. Or I'm, yeah. Or I like a good Italian wine. Favorite uh, pair of shoes in your collection. Um, whew. favorite pair of shoes. I mean, my my everyday shoe that I wear so often are my Axel Arigatos, like the most comfortable pair of shoes that I have. And then a shoe that I have on dead stock that I haven't worn that I probably won't ever wear and that I might be selling soon is I have Red Octobers. Mm-hmm. And I just been sitting on ice 
for for a minute. So I don't know if I'm gonna pull them out or if I'm gonna get rid of them and sell them. But they're they're oh, worth okay. a, a pretty penny right now. Why are you oh. thinking about selling them? Because it's one of those things where I was like, I haven't worn them yet, so I'm like, like they just kind of there. So I mean, yeah. they're in the box. They're not even out. I mean, it's like shoes are made to be worn. Everyone's like, oh, I don't want to wear them because they this, that, and the other. But you're supposed to wear them. Um, yeah, nice. So, but yeah, I mean, I should. I need to do something with them. Uh, favorite timepiece. I know you're kind of a collector. Yeah. So my favorite timepiece is is, is, uh, is my GMT root beer, and it's from '92. I actually just like stumbled upon it at this watch shop and it was actually a vintage piece that I've been looking for for a while, maybe not the year. I actually one in my year, 95. Um, I don't think they That's necessarily so make 95s, but That's yeah, so, crazy, 95. so I was looking for that. Yeah. <laughs> Golly, this man's still like 12 years in the league, only like 28. Unbelievable. <laughs> but yeah, it's my favorite because it's just one, it was brand new. Two, it's you know, it's older than me, technically. And three, it was just hard to get and it was just I, I just stumbled upon it and it was just it was just just luck really. And it's just a beautiful watch. Do, do, got anything else, Moby? No, nah, that's uh, I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a little sly, you know. Gracious for his time, you know. <laughs> got uh, got some big goals. He got to get ready. We don't want, we don't want LAFC uh, getting mad at us for taking his time. And uh, really excited for you and your future. Um, knock on wood, you know, good playoff run, and uh, you know, hopefully a, a good World Cup run as well. So that's it Appreciate for that. this week. Subscribe, rate, and review. It helps us get discovered. Follow us on the socials at Two Cents FC Show. Tweet us your comments on the show and any topics you want me or L to discuss. Uh, once again, uh, Kellen, where can people follow you? Where can people find you um, if they want to support your your journey both on and off the field? Yeah, it's my first name and last name on all my socials. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Kellen Acosta. Follow me, message me. I usually respond. So if you have any questions or whatever. Um, I, I will try to reach back out. No, most definitely. Um, yeah. We're definitely going to have to tap in <laughs> offline and uh, uh, continue uh, continue making moves, man. But mad respect to what you got going on, and uh, that's it. Right. Next Word. Week. I appreciate you guys again. Thank you for having me.